With the rise of drag and drop UIs, it has become quite easy to create autonomous AI agents and applications. What makes these frameworks so great is that it's able to help you streamline the process to automate the creation of your own AI agent and application for multi-purpose use cases. This is where I would like to introduce VectorShift. The end-to-end -end AI automation platform that lets you create autonomous AI assistants, agents, and automations with the need for no code using a simple drag-and-drop UI. It provides a user-friendly interface for building AI workflows and enabling live syncing of data from various sources such as Notion, Airtable, Google Drive, OneDrive, as well as many other CRMs. Users can define triggers for running workflows such as incoming emails or even Slack messages and perform actions across different tools such as responding to emails or adding leads to CRMs. Just take a look at this demo video as to how you can create an AI agent with VectorShift to chat with your spreadsheet. Hello, my name is Albert, one of the co-founders of VectorShift. Today, I'm going to talk about how to use the VectorShift platform to build a pipeline that allows you to chat with a spreadsheet. What this means is that you're going to be able to use semantic queries and, in fact, complex queries asking, for example, to summarize the data, to make some cuts of the data, all in natural language, and a pipeline will be able to do that for you. Now, if you see on the screen, I have a spreadsheet on top startup data. There's five columns, one the company name, the valuation, the valuation date, the industry, and the country. We can go ahead into the VectorShift platform and see how we can actually chat with the spreadsheet. Now, uh, we're here in the VectorShift platform. Uh, we're in the pipelines tab, and I already have one of these pipelines built. We'll walk through it, but before we do that, uh, we can go ahead and first run it and show you how it's run. Say I want to see which company has the highest valuation. I can just go ahead and type it in. Which company has the highest valuation? I can go ahead and upload the CSV. There we go. And we go ahead and press run, and it should return uh, by dance. There we go. What we actually have in the, going on in the background is, you know, it's interpreting, you know, what is highest valuation? That must be the valuation column. And highest means the largest, so it's creating the right queries to actually find the right data in this large spreadsheet to determine that ByteDance is actually a company that has the highest valuation. Let's go ahead and actually build this pipeline from scratch. We can press new, create a pipeline. Now, as you saw on the previous screen, we need two inputs, one for the user question and one to upload the CSV. We can change the name of the variables here, CSV. Now, CSV is a file, not a text, so let's go ahead and change it to file. Now, we use the CSV query data loader, which takes in a CSV and a query to produce output. That's it. In the CSV query node, there's already a large language model that's actually baked in the background, and it's recursively actually calling itself to actually figure out what is the right columns, what is the right data within the columns to actually return what you actually need. Thank you now, much. isn't that amazing? There's endless possibilities in creating various AI applications, agents, and pipelines with VectorShift to help you streamline your efficiency and productivity. Throughout today's video, we're going to be exploring VectorShift further in detail by creating our own autonomous AI assistant, going further in detail on the capabilities, and so much more. So with that thought, guys, stay tuned, and let's get straight into the video. Sorry for being repetitive, but this month we had insane partnerships with big companies giving out subscriptions to AI tools completely for free. These are tools that will streamline your business's growth and improve your efficiency. Just being a patron this past month, you were given access to six paid subscriptions completely for free. Not only do you access these subscriptions, but you gain the ability for consulting, networking, collaborating with the community, as well as with myself. You get access to daily AI news, resources, giveaways, and so much more. If you're interested, check out the Patreon link in the description below to gain access to these benefits. Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World Bay AI. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Vector Shift. Now, this is an AI automation platform with a super simple drag and drop UI that lets you build AI agents, AI assistants, chatbots, as well as many other automations. Now, what sets Vector Shift apart from other no code platforms with similar UIs is its focus on AI first approach. This is offering a clear user interface and it provides flexibility for anyone to build complex AI solutions. This is where you're able to chain different prompts as well as control chunk sizes with quality. Now let's just quickly go over some of the capabilities of VectorShift. Firstly, we have the feature of having no code required when you're building and deploying AI applications, different automations, or even different AI agents. This is where you do not need any sort of code using their drag and drop feature. This is where you can customize different components as well as different interfaces. And this is something that you can see as an example. 
Secondly, we have Code SDK, where you can access Vector Shift's functionality through different APIs in your own IDE. This is allowing you to integrate different existing code bases and complete between no code and code SDKs. If we go down a little bit, we can see that you're able to access the marketplace with pre built use cases. This is where you can explore and utilize pre built solutions for common AI applications that are already available in Vector Shift's marketplace. You have the agents which can execute complex tasks, where you can deploy these autonomous agents within Vector Shift to execute these tasks. Now, you also have the ability to search, which is utilizing advanced search algorithms in Vector Shift to retrieve data efficiently, ensuring that there is optimal performance and accuracy in your AI application with your AI agents as well as with your pipeline. You have the ability to integrate various applications and APIs and you're able to have live syncing, which is something that lets you retrieve information on a really fast speed. Now, you also have the ability to work with many other large language models, and this gives you a lot more flexibility in using the platform. So how can you get started? Well, it's super simple. What you want to do is go over to the VectorShift.ai website, which is something that I'll leave a link to in the description below. Now, once you are over here, click on Get Started, which will prompt you to this next web page, which is going to basically let you sign up with your Google account or with your GitHub. You're also able to sign up with an email address. So once you have done that, you can then proceed forward to the next page, which is going to take you to the dashboard. Once you have signed in, you'll be then sent over to the pipeline dashboard. Now, this is where you're going to be able to build, design, prototype, as well as develop any sort of generative AI workflow with different types of automations across two interfaces. You have the no code automation interface, as well as the code SDK. There's various use cases such as chatbots, automations with your workflows, where you can schedule workflows to run certain time intervals, such as running emails, Slack messages. You have the ability to have document search, which summarizes and answers questions about your documents. You you have content creation where you can create marketing copies, personalized outbound emails, as well as the analyst, which can replicate logical thinking of an analyst to generate synthesized outputs. Now, before we move on further, I want to explain the core components a little bit further in detail. Firstly, we have the pipelines. This is where you're able to manage and create workflows using the pipeline builder. This is a drag and drop tool for building generative AI workflows with different nodes. Now, if you are to go back, secondly, we have this marketplace component where you're able to access pre-built pipelines and share your own with other users. You can also import pipelines into your workflow from this marketplace. Thirdly, we have the storage component. This is where you're able to create vector stores for storing data or uploading files directly for use within this pipeline. This is where you can switch between creating vector stores as well as uploading files using tabs. Next up, we have automations. This is a great way for you to schedule workflows to run at specific intervals or based on triggers. This is where you're able to enable the ability to have that autonomous functionality for your pipelines. This is where you can create automations and have it so that you can select different apps and connect it based off the events that you want it to trigger based off that specific interval or that trigger. You're also able to play around with chatbots where you can create and have it connected to your knowledge base so that it can generate or answer questions based off the context that you give it. You're also able to evaluate the different performances of different AI agents, automations, as well as different AI applications that are created with Vector Shift. You're also able to play around with transformations, which is something that you can take a look at from the documentations, which shows you how you can build and create new transformations. Now, in this next segment, I'm going to be showcasing how you can build your own autonomous pipeline to stream Line the process of sending and responding to customer emails using this AI with Vector Shift. So what you need to do is go over to the Pipelines tab. And once you are over here, you need to simply click on Create Pipeline. This is the main dashboard where you're going to be interacting with this user-friendly drag and drop UI that will help you build your pipeline super easily. So first off, what we're going to do is go over to the general tab and put two input nodes. So what is an input node? Well, it's kind of self-explanatory as these nodes are able to simply receive information. 
So for our case, what we're doing in this example is streamlining the process of sending and responding to emails. And this is where we're going to use vector shift to help us do so. So in this case, we're going to have two nodes. Firstly, I'm going to have it so that I'm able to receive the input of our customer's email address ID. So I can name this as email address underscore. And in this other one, I'm going to have it so that it is gathering information from the body text of the email so that the LLM can process the input query. So whatever customer request may be sent to me, I can have the LLM understand and gather the information first and understand what is happening. So once I have then set the two input nodes, I can then move over to the LMs. And this is where you can choose from a range of different large language model nodes. I'm going to be using open AIs because I believe that's the best one at this current moment. But you're also able to use open source nodes, which you can use specific models of a hugging face. And this is a great option for you to gain more flexibility. Now we'll be giving the system instruction to the large language model where we're basically telling it that its job is to generate an email response to the request based on the context. This is where you can also adjust the prompt and this is where it will basically respond in a certain action or a certain type of generation based off the prompt or instruction that you give it. So I went along and set up the prompt template to have it so that the large language model can respond based off of user queries. You can connect the body of the email to the request as customers are the ones sending the emails to you with a request or a question. But in other terms, we need to also provide context for the large language model to respond. So in this case, I have added a vector store and this will store all the vector store documentations so that the body of the email is queried into the vector store and then have it connected to the large language models context to make sure that it only provides the most relevant information. So you can have it so that the information is also queried into the vector store reader after you have created your own vector store and then the results are then sent back to the context of the large language model. Lastly, we just need to integrate a Gmail node and a text node. So you can go over to integrations, drag and drop a Gmail node over here, change the action type to create email draft, sign in with your Gmail account, once that is done, go over to general and create a text node, which is going to help respond to your user queries. And then you can have it so that this text will basically have this prompt response to world of AI customer queries. So you can set it to whatever you want. In this case, I have it set to this and I have it connected as a subject of my Gmail response node. Now, in this case, you can also have it so that the email ID address ID is connected to the recipients because these are the original senders of the user query. Once that is done, you can have the open large language model or response set to the body of your Gmail node. And once that is done, you have finally completed your pipeline. So now that I have finally created my automation pipeline, I can then click save and then I can start deploying it. So what you want to do next is click deploy and click on automation. Once you have done that, you can then name your pipeline to whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to have it set to Gmail automation and then I'm going to select an app. So I'm going to click Gmail and then sign in with my Google account. So once I have set my account, I can then have it so that the event to respond to is a new email. And this is where you're going to need to configure. So what do you want to call this automation? You can name it anything you want. I'm going to just name it Gmail auto and then select a trigger and search for records. So in this case, I'm going to have it so that it triggers responses based off of uh, something that comes into my inbox on my email. So now you can select the trigger to fetch records. You can receive the time, subject, sender, recipient, as well as the email ID and the content. In this case, we're going to have the email address ID as the sender, which is the person who is sending the email and the body as the content. Now, once that is done, you can simply click save and then you can proceed forward with the deployment. Now, what you can do is go back to the pipelines and you want to go all the way down to automations and you can then click on deploy. Once you have it deployed, you can then head over to pipelines and then you can start running this. So in this case, we're just going to test it out. I'm going to then send an email to this email address and I'm going to ask it, what is crypto? And I'm going to basically see if it's working where if it actually creates a draft for me based off the flow that I created. So I'm going to click run and I'm going to see if it's able to create a draft for me. So give me a couple seconds. Once that's finished, I'm able to go over to my Gmail 
And you can see right over here that it has created and crafted a response to the world of AI customer query, where it's basically responding with the subject as well as a draft on what is cryptocurrencies. Now that is easy as that. And that's how you can basically run a fully functional autonomous AI automation of Gmail requests. And that's basically it for today's video on vector shifts, guys. This is an amazing AI automation platform that allows you to build assistance, agents, and automation without code and with a simple UI. I truly recommend that you check this out with all the links that I used in today's video in the description below. Make sure you check out the Patreon page if you want to access amazing subscriptions completely for free. Make sure you follow us on Twitter if you guys haven't already to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.